Hello YouTube, you may have seen my thoughts most recently on the state of the new world. If you haven't seen my state of the PvP aspects of the game in the top right of your screen for you right now, I'm going to link that card for you so you can see my thoughts on what new world is like right now. But understandably so, the population for new world is on a diminishing basis once again. This is probably the third or fourth time in new world's history of only 15 months now, really, that we're seeing this kind of population decline. And with the current roadmap of the game, I feel like it's very difficult for AGS to be able to arrest this player decline without some substantial announcements coming out very soon, which I'm just not seeing. So for that reason, a lot of players are looking elsewhere. I myself, I'm looking elsewhere. And I know many, many of you PvP and MMO players will be aware of a game called Throne and Liberty. And I'm going to talk about that right now and why New World is currently a Throne and Liberty waiting room. If you enjoy this video or you want to see more Throne and Liberty or New World content, make sure you like and subscribe this video so that you don't forget me and you get to keep on watching this content. As we talk here, I'm going to play the official Throne and Liberty trailer that was announced about nine months ago. So Throne and Liberty is a brand new MMO game that's coming out from NCSoft, the publisher and developer of uh, Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2 and Lineage, uh, very popular games for MMO players that I'm sure all of you will know. And for that reason, it's got a lot of hype surrounding it. Now, where is Throne and Liberty and when is it coming out? Throne and Liberty is not currently a hard scheduled release date. We expect it at the moment, based on current trajectory, to be first half of 2023. In particular, just fine tuning that a little bit, if I had to speculate a little bit, to looking like it's very likely going to be April 2023. Now, why April 2023? NCSoft has announced a closed beta that's going to be available to Korean residents only. And you're not going to be able to buy an account on GTG, a Korean account, or anything like that. You're going to have to physically go to an address in Korea to be able to play that and to be able to apply for that position. You have to have a Korean phone number. So Unless you're willing to get a Korean phone number and travel to Korea, if you're not a Korean resident, you're very unlikely to be able to get in. That being said, if you are one of the lucky participants to get to go, you're going to be able to go. However, there have been a series of non-disclosure agreements signed from the participants going from what I understand. So we're not going to get any additional footage from that unless NCSoft decide to release a highlight reel or some additional gameplay footage from that. However, it would be absolutely fantastic. Wow. That's release date. Let's talk about why I think this is going to be important for New World players or a game that we're going to enjoy. It's very, very similar to New World. So some of the things we know about Throne and Liberty right now is that you can, it's not really a class-based system like WoW is. So in WoW, you're either locked to a Warlock or a Healer or something like that, and you're locked into that. And if you want to play different classes, you have to make different characters. One of the things that many players loved about New World is the fact that you can chop and change your weapon at any time. It's relatively cheap to respec, costing you some Azov on the skill tree or coin to respec. And you can go for some crazy combinations like Ice Gauntlet Rapier or something like Warhammer Lifestyle I've seen many times, Warhammer Sword and Shield, etc, etc. You can combine any of those different weapons for really, really fun and off-meta builds to be able to play. Now, what you can do in Throne and Liberty, from what we understand, is very similar. You're not going to be tied in on a class-based system. You are going to be linked. Now, I'm sure that from a PvX perspective, there will be the traditional role of Tank, Healer, Bruiser, Mage, but within that, you should be able to reuse different weapons to be able to come up with a class that suits that build. So that's going to be really, really effective. And that's going to be a massive selling point for the game because that's a really positive part of New World that so many New World players enjoy. So something like that from a Throne and Liberty perspective is going to be a major selling point for the game. As we watch the rest of the trailer here, it's very grand, very epic landscapes that we're going to be fighting within. And you saw huge amounts of multiplayer environments you're going to be fighting world bosses so expect lots of open world bosses expect lots of raid bosses that are going to need a huge number of participants to be able to complete as well is there pvp on this game yes absolutely there's pvp on this game i'm getting very mixed reports from what i'm reading online as to whether those pvp zones are opt-in or opt-out i suspect they will be opt-in to be honest with you that seems to be most popular from a pvx type game perspective however for there to be a choice of some zones where they would be opt where they would just be automatic that would be fantastic from my perspective as well but you can just look at the director's preview for the game, which I'll link in the description below as well for you. There will be certain PvP zones that will not be opt-in. You can opt to leave those zones if you don't want to be caught in PvP, and that's what the director is saying here. There's going to be world events that will turn in combat zones into a particular region, and they will be PvP zones. You'll get a notification of that. You'll be able to leave that zone if you're not interested in PvP. But if you are interested in PvP and you're playing with a company, you can come to these zones for huge open world battles. I mean, this looks exceptionally fun to me. This looks on a scale that New World gets to not often enough. We all love open world PvP in New World. It's one of the best parts of the game. It's just too infrequent because there isn't enough um, reward or incentive for open world PvP. So one of the things I'm hoping about 
or Throne and Liberty is that there's a strong incentive if they can get these combat zones and good rewards associated with the combat zones, and you're going to get a lot of open world PvP, and that's going to make the game so much fun as well. But just looking graphically from the game as well, it looks absolutely fundamentally so much of an improvement on on New World as well, and hopefully you won't need NVIDIA Inspector to be able to improve your game as well. But you can see here, if you're a fan of the New World landscapes, you'll absolutely be a fan of the Throne and Liberty landscapes. Very similar looking spaces, absolutely amazing graphics. It looks better graphically than New World in my opinion. And the trailer does such a great job of just giving you an epic feel for it. Very Void Gauntlet looking type weapon there, etc. as we go and look towards the battle scenes and the battle scenes look really clean. Now, if you look at the abilities keys as well, on the bottom of your screen as we go through the trailer again, you're going to see that the ability keys are very similar to New World as well. Not having a wow, huge number of like 30 abilities to be able to macro on your screen at any one time. This is a game where it's going to be a smaller number of abilities on a rapid cooldown that you're going to be able to chain together in a New World-esque way. There's going to be a deep lore on this game, better than the New World lore, I hope, which I feel is completely non-existent at times. There is apparently a lore in New World that's completely readable. But here, apparently, the NPC interaction is going to give you a really strong feel for what the game is and how you connect to the game. So I'm hoping that's going to make me more interested in PvE and Throne of Liberty than I ever was in New World. But just going back to that ability point here, you can see on the screen there's only eight abilities around there, one to four particular points in time. And look at this, huge open world bosses that are going to be absolutely really fun. New World had that in a couple of instances, like Winter Warrior or the big Turculon events. But in reality, they're few and far between. But just look at the number that you've got on your screen here. It looks absolutely fantastic. And these raids of all of these parties coming in looks absolutely unbelievable. Now, key to this game will be whether the servers can handle it. And I hope NCSoft has learned from some of the mistakes of AGS. I'm thinking about on release when 50 v 50 wars come out and they were like PowerPoint slideshows or when the game came out and there was massive queue times. We'll have to see how NCSoft handles that. But the best thing about this game from my perspective is it's coming from a renowned MMO developer with a rich history in developing MMOs. Not like AGS where New World was their for first foray into the MMO market. This is from a very seasoned and experienced team who know exactly what they're doing. And so for that reason would have come across the problems, the teething problems that New World really badly suffered from. So I'm hoping that we don't get that from this game as well. Now, I'm just going to go through some of the concept art for this game, some of the weapons that we've seen. This is from a MMORPG article that I'll link in the description below. You can see here they've got a Deadly Edge Greatsword, which looks absolutely killer. We've got a, a crossbow user there. We've got a normal bow user that will make the dex users of New Worlds very happy. We have a normal sword there. It's not a greatsword, more like a sword and shield. It's going to go with this savage battle shield there on the concept art. We've got this Moonlight Desolation Sword. I'm telling you now, all of these concept arts look so much better than the New World concept art did. New World concept art was great. I'm thinking in particular when they released the Void Gauntlet and Ice Gauntlet concept arts, I thought those things looked really cool. But the Great Axe con concept art was literally just about as basic a Great Axe as you can imagine. Whereas look at this for the Moon Takers, Moonlight Undertaker staff. You know, with all of the shards there coming off of it and the Commander's Great Sword, which looks relatively basic from the grand scheme of things. But some of the weapons that are coming in the game, as I say, is going to be swords, great swords, bows, crossbows mages, shields, um, tons of good stuff coming in the game. So look, that's an introduction to Friend Liberty for you. I bring that to you because I think that's going to be important for New World players who are looking at a brand new game to play, who are getting frustrated with the lack of development on New World and the lack of information coming from uh, the AGS dev team to be able to think about this game. It's, it's about three months away now, as we suspect. We've got the benefits of the, hopefully we get some Korean gameplay highlights coming from that closed beta testing. It's going to happen very shortly and we get an official release date as well but this is coming out on pc and console at the moment it's not clear whether the game's going to be free to play or include pay to win elements ncsoft is known for some pay to win elements however there are apparently some news coming out that there is very little pay to win elements or no pay to win elements in the game but we're just going to have to see what it's like when we get a bit more information about the game as well hopefully there's a little bit less of that obviously you have pay to win elements in games like Lost Ark that you can mitigate by having like 15 accounts. We're hoping the game's not that bad, but I for one, I'm super happy to be playing Throne and Liberty. I for one, I'm super excited to be looking at Throne and Liberty. I think the game looks fantastic and I'm going to be absolutely pre-ordering it and playing it on day one release. I'll be streaming the game live on Twitch as well, so make sure you follow me on Twitch. Twitch link is in the description below. We'll be talking about it in my Discord community. Discord link is in the description below. And at the moment, I've got a company for Throne and Liberty. And that looks like the way you should be pre-organizing yourselves in companies as well. As of every MMO, you need to be social and get the most out of this game. But I'll tell you the server that I'm on as soon as I know it. So if you'd like to come and play with me, you also have the opportunity to come and play with me as well. 
If you've enjoyed this video, consider leaving me a like and subscribe so I can continue to make Throne and Liberty content for you as we look to progress this game and move into this game in the future. I'm still looking to create new world content, but in reality, to help me keep making new world content, again, I need all of your likes and subscribes to help give me enough incentive to continue to produce that kind of content as well. If you're looking forward to this game, let me know in the comments section below and what you think about it. Until next time, everyone, stay safe and keep rocking.